Hi everyone, it's Phil Frost from Main Street ROI. I want to welcome you today. We're going to be talking about how Main Street ROI can help grow your business with SEO. As always, we have some housekeeping. I want to encourage everyone to post questions to the Q&A section in the GoToWebinar window. That should be in the upper right-hand corner of your screen. I see Dave found that. Welcome, Dave, from Seattle. I also encourage everyone to turn off distractions. <clears throat> You'll get the most out of this presentation if you're not also scrolling through your Facebook feed, reading up on uh, the new uh, Trump updates, or trying to catch up on your uh, emails. And I do have a poll to kick this off and see who is on today. So on your screen, you should see a poll that says, are you currently working with an SEO agency or consultant? Yes, no, or I am a consultant. We are an agency. All right, I see some votes coming in here. Let me just give that about 10 more seconds. <clears throat> All right, five, four, three, two, one. Looks like 75% voted. Close that. I've got one more poll. Just to get a sense for the size of your SEO campaigns. What is the current or anticipated monthly SEO budget for 2018? Less than 500 a month, 500 to 1,000 a month, 1,000 to 2,000 per month, or more than 2,000 per month? Okay, starting to see some votes come in. <clears throat> Looks like it's spread out pretty evenly from less than 500 up to about 2,000 per month. Close that out in four, three, two, one. All right, I appreciate everyone submitting their answers there. Uh, just so you know, 38% less than 500 per, per month, 38% 500 to 1,000 per month, and then 25%. 1,000 to 2,000 per month, and no one is more than 2,000 per month. And I'll also get the uh, most frequently question out of the way right at the start here. <clears throat> the answer is yes, we are recording, and we typically send the recordings of these presentations within about 24 hours. All right, so if you're new to Main Street RI, I'll give you a quick overview. Our mission here is to empower businesses to be successful via digital marketing. We provide both services and training. Uh, so on the services side, we provide uh, SEO. Obviously, that's what today is going to be about. We also provide online advertising uh, via Google AdWords, Facebook, and Bing. And we also provide WordPress redesign uh, development projects. So if you're looking to... Uh, take an outdated website and uh, move that over to WordPress and make it a responsive website that responds to different devices, we could help you out with that as well. And uh, since you're on this training today, you already know we provide a lot of training, uh, both free and paid. Uh, we provide free training like this webinar today. Uh, we also post a lot of articles on our blog, send a lot of information via our newsletter, and we also have some more in-depth paid trainings that dive into a particular marketing tactic <clears throat> like SEO or Google AdWords or Facebook ads. And we also provide some one-on-one -on -one consulting. And uh, if you haven't been on a webinar yet, you're probably wondering who the heck am I? Uh, again, my name is Phil Frost. I'm the founder of Main Street ROI. Uh, to date, we've helped over 2,000 businesses with their digital marketing, and we've been featured in Forbes, Inc., Amex and Mashable. And I'm also the proud father of two cute kids. We've got Violet on the left there. She uh, just turned five in January, on January 2nd. And my chubby son, Emmett, on the right, he's uh, two and a half years old. He'll be three in April. And my beautiful wife, Erin, in the middle. We live on the upper west side of Manhattan. And our office here is on uh, 23rd and 6th Ave in Manhattan. 
All right, so let's dive in. <clears throat> How Main Street ROI can help grow your business with SEO. So here's what we're gonna cover. First, why invest in SEO? Uh, why choose Main Street ROI? We'll talk about our approach to SEO, our uh, six-step process. I'll walk through some case studies. I'll walk through our SEO services schedule along with the SEO fees. Uh, we'll touch on next steps to get started. And at the end, we'll have some live Q&A. But again, if you have questions throughout, feel free to post those in the Q&A section of GoToWebinar, and I will address those as they come in. All right, so why invest in SEO? There's a lot of buzz around search engine optimization, a lot of coverage in the in the media when you're when you're reading about it online, lots of information. And uh, I boiled down the why invest it to uh, just three reasons here. First, high quality traffic. So with, with SEO, you're getting your website to show up when people are literally searching for your product or service and they are they're obviously likely to uh, sign up or make a purchase. The, the analogy here is uh, the yellow pages. So when I grew up, if I needed a, uh, a, a plumber or a fence company or a pizza, I would turn to the yellow pages and that's basically at the point of being ready to make a purchase. <clears throat> People would turn to the yellow pages, find the business that they need, and, uh, and, and reach out. And you obviously have high conversion rates when you're talking with people who have a need and are ready to buy. And that's a, a similar situation if you are ranking for the right keywords in Google, uh, what we call buying intent keywords. If you are ranking for those types of keywords, that's basically the equivalent of someone being ready to buy, opening up a Yellow Pages book, and uh, and calling that business. Second reason here is steady traffic. So not only are you getting high quality traffic, you're also getting a steady stream. So if you're you're ranking for again what we call those buying intent keywords, uh, uh, Google has data on how often people are searching that every month. And uh, based on how many times people are searching those keywords, you will uh, be driving a certain amount of clicks to your website each month with those uh, high rankings in Google. And the third reason, once you are ranking, uh, that you, you don't have to pay every time someone clicks and visits your site. So I bring that up. Uh, there is a misconception uh, around SEO being totally free. Well, obviously, it's not free. You have to uh, invest in, uh, in in getting your website to rank high and invest in maintaining those rankings. But I do want to clarify that anyone clicking on your listing when you are ranking, you don't have to pay Google. Um, with Google AdWords advertising, uh, that is a, a big difference if you're paying for the rankings and you're in, uh, let's say, those first four ad spots. Anytime someone clicks on those listings, uh, those businesses do pay Google, uh, and that's through the Google AdWords platform. So we're talking about SEO here. We're not talking about Google AdWords. And Roger, I saw your question, and the answer is yes, we are recording, and uh, we typically get the replay sent out within 24 hours. All right, so why choose Main Street RI? Walk through some reasons here. First, we're an industry authority. I already mentioned our thought leadership has been featured in Forbes, Inc., Amex, as well as Mashable. Um, I also have a, a column in, uh, um, in a, a publication about marketing, uh, targetmarketingmag.com. Um, and I already mentioned we're um, doing a lot of training around uh, digital marketing. We've par partnered with a lot of the, uh, the big names in this space. We provide results. I show the, uh, the Google reviews here. Uh, we're up over 135 at this point. This uh, snapshot taken a while ago. <clears throat> uh, but we're getting those reviews based on the results. And I'll walk through some of the case studies uh, later on. Third reason, we use a 
proven six-step process, which I'm going to walk through in this presentation. So uh, we're, we're not just winging it with every client. We do have a, a very uh, systematic approach to SEO, and we have that very well documented. With that said, though, we're not cookie cutter. <clears throat> we have a process that we go through, but each client is different in that they're going to have different issues that we have to address. So we, uh, we don't apply the same cookie cutter plan to every website. We actually customize each plan. Actually, each month of the year, we're customizing that plan based on the client's needs. We also pride ourselves on the fact that we're extremely transparent. We're not a black box. We're an open book. Uh, that <clears throat> should be pretty clear uh, based on how much information that we are publishing, uh, both on our blog, sending our, in our newsletter, as well as this presentation today. We, uh, we don't try to hide anything. Very transparent with our approach to SEO, as well as advertising and other uh, marketing tactics. Uh, we're also very transparent with our, our fees. Um, other agencies uh, bake in their fees um, and, and kind of hide it with the, uh, the ad spend as well. We're very transparent and we separate uh, any type of management fees that we get versus any fees that you're actually paying, let's say, to Google AdWords or Facebook ads. And the six reasons we're very responsive. That's something we work very hard, uh, hard on with our client success managers. Uh, every one of our clients is assigned to a client success manager. It's that person's job to be very responsive, um, either same day or if they get a message late in the day, being re being responsive within at least 24 hours uh, via email and phone. All right, so I'm going to walk through what I mentioned before, that six-step SEO process. So this is the process that we go through with every client. Uh, but again, with that said, uh, based on what we find by going through this process, we then customize uh, the uh, service that we're providing. And it really, it always starts with an SEO audit. So every new client that joins, we're going to do a uh, complete SEO audit of both on-page and off-page SEO factors to figure out where the uh, the client needs to improve. And then based on that audit, pretty much uh, every client is going to have technical issues that we need to fix. So we, we move on to the technical fixes that would be preventing you from ranking. Once we get the technical fixes out of the way, we move on to keyword optimization. And by that, that involves keyword research. I mentioned earlier, we try to find what we call buying intent keywords. Those are the keywords where someone is searching in Google to make a purchase. So they're looking to actually hire you for your services or buy your products on your website or in your store. So we really, we, we can break down any keyword on a scale from either more research intent or buying intent. And with research intent, there's lots of folks going online doing research, but they're not very likely to buy. And where we want to focus is, at least initially, finding those buying intent keywords and making sure we optimize your product or service pages for those buying intent keywords. Uh, once we've got the keyword, op keyword research done and we've made edits to your site to optimize for those keywords, then we move on to building up the reputation of your site. Uh, Google's first going to look at whether or not you're relevant, and we take care of that with steps two and three. We uh, make sure there are no technical issues preventing you from ranking, and then uh, make sure you're, you have pages that are relevant for the keywords you want to rank for. That's part of keyword optimization. And then step four, we want to build up your website's authority or reputation, and we do that by getting 
other websites to link to. You might have heard of link building. Uh, we, we find relevant links and get those to your site, as well as citations. And a citation is simply a mention of your business name, address, and phone number. And really that boils down to uh, getting listed in other business directories. And another tactic we found works well is issuing press releases. Uh, press releases can get picked up on uh, hundreds, even thousands of other uh, publications. And in that press release will be a mention of your name, address, and phone number. So each one of those uh, just publications that uh, publishes that press release, that would count as a citation to uh, boost up your reputation. From there, we move on to content development. Uh, so the analogy I like to use here is a spider spinning a web. And if you have a, if your website, let's say, has 10 pages right now, you really only have uh, 10 page, pages, 10 opportunities to uh, get ranked in Google. And if you build more pages, you're basically like a spider spinning a bigger and bigger web that can capture more prospects. So it gives you more opportunities to rank for more keyword searches. Uh, and that's why building up, uh, let's say, a resource center in, on your website uh, or building additional service pages can be a, a great tactic to increase your reach for SEO. And we also set up tracking and reporting. We would actually tr set this up uh, in the beginning. We would uh, set up Google Analytics. We get that linked up with Google Search Console, uh, and that's going to give us the data we need to see how much traffic you're getting from SEO. And then with proper conversion tracking in Google Analytics, we'll be able to determine how much of that SEO traffic is turning into leads and sales for your business. All right, so next I wanna show you some case studies. And this first one here uh, is a, a business where we saw a seven time increase in traffic from SEO. And when we started working with this client, they were not ranking in, in Google for any of their relevant terms and the website was also not mobile friendly. So we started with that SEO audit. We audited the, the existing website. We actually built a mobile friendly WordPress website for this particular client. That's what we'll do uh, initially for clients that need new websites. Uh, we do have the capabilities to uh, do a WordPress redesign get the website mobile friendly, uh, and we, we strongly encourage that just because uh, more and more searches from your prospective customers are on mobile devices. And uh, this year, Google is going to move to what they call a mobile first index. And what that means is Google's actually going to look at your the mobile version of your website first and make decisions about how your website should rank uh, based on your mobile website. Whereas before that, uh, Google has been looking at your desktop version or your computer version and making decisions. Uh, Google, Google's going to flip that and start looking at your mobile website first. So just a heads up there. It's really important to get a, a mobile-friendly website uh, set up. Uh, next, we did some keyword research and optimized their pages. Uh, we did some link building, and then we did some content development. We built a library of articles, what we call a resource center, uh, with um, more informational articles that can rank for uh, more research intent keywords, expand your, your reach to both buying intent and research intent, because those research intent keywords, <clears throat> while they aren't likely to be ready to buy right now. If you can get in front of them, uh, start building that relationship early on in the sales funnel, then obviously later on when they are ready to buy, uh, you can be top of mind. 
So the case study here, just a, there's a note there, it's a graph of organic, quote, SEO traffic only. Uh, so this is only SEO traffic, and you can see the, uh, it was pretty flat before we started working together. And then once uh, we optimized their site, started building out the, uh, the content on their site, that's when you started to see that increase. <clears throat> and uh, there was actually a, a seven times increase in organic traffic. Uh, Justin had a question. What's the process around developing content? Do you write the content? Does the client write it? <clears throat> or do you outsource it? So we, we like to write it. Uh, we have writers on staff, and we will do the research to find the topics for for content. I, I guess let me just take a step back. There's content for, let's say, your services pages, or there's building out what I'm calling a resource center. If it's a resource center, we'll do keyword research, identify topics to write articles about, get those approved by the client. Once we have approved topics, we would then write the articles, get those articles approved by the client, and then publish them on the site. That's typically the process. Uh, with that said, we do work with some clients that have writers. In that case, we typically will do the keyword research and identify topics and then send those topics to the client. And then from there, the client would get the uh, content developed. And then if they have a developer, they can handle getting that published, or if they don't, we'll handle getting it published. So we're, we're flexible. And then the I mentioned there could also be uh, services content or product specific content. Uh, in that case, uh, it, it does depend if our writers are familiar with the product or service, we can uh, handle that or at least do a first draft. Uh, but if it's more technical in nature, uh, we would need the, the client to assist. And then Dave had the question, are you pushing new clients towards GTM, which I believe you're, you're referring to Google Tag Manager? Um, <clears throat> yes, generally our developer is setting up Google Tag Manager. Uh, and if you're not familiar with that, it's just a, it's a, a little piece of code that you put on the site and then it allows you then to log in to Google Tag Manager and uh, add other types of code to your site. For example, Google AdWords conversion tracking, uh, the Facebook ads pixel, uh, the Bing ads pixel. You can add all of that code to Google Tag Manager and uh, you don't have to go into the website and make any edits. So that can be a, a big benefit. Uh, if you don't want to be messing around in the website itself. With that said, there are certain cases where it does not work very well for certain tracking situations, um, uh, certain e-commerce revenue tracking situations. We've run into cases where Google Tag Manager doesn't work as well as just putting the code right on the page. Um, but kind of the re reverse situation is where Google Tag Manager works very well and it's very easy to uh, do some more custom tracking. Uh, if you wanted to track uh, button clicks, for example, uh, or clicks on certain links, that can be uh, much easier to set up in Google Tag Manager. <clears throat> and saw a question here. Uh, Jim said, we have a mobile-friendly site built on Wix. Is that okay? Short answer is yes. Uh, our developers have worked on uh, pretty much every CMS out there, uh, including Wix. Um, with that said, there are some limitations with Wix. I'm not familiar with exactly what the limitations are with that uh, platform. Uh, but I know with Wix and Squarespace is another example, uh, there can be some limitations. So, for example, we'll do an, an SEO audit. We might recommend X, Y, and Z, but because you're on uh, Wix or Squarespace, we can't do X or we can't do Y, uh, but we would obviously talk to you about that. 
and we can always make a decision on whether it makes sense to move to a different platform like WordPress or stick with uh, the current platform and uh, just do the best we can uh, with the limitations there. All right, second case study. This one is going to show four times increase in traffic and then nine time increase in leads. Uh, similar situation here, not optimized for relevant keywords. They had zero first page rankings. Uh, they weren't generating enough traffic and leads. That's why they came to us. What we did, did that audit. So we did that SEO audit, created a custom plan, optimized the website pages, built the, the links, Again, developed a library of articles. And in this case, you can see uh, <clears throat> the graph here is showing uh, organic traffic, which is SEO traffic. It's also showing goal completions. So I mentioned earlier uh, conversion tracking in uh, Google Analytics. Those are called goals. And uh, these goals are uh, leads from SEO. So these are folks completing a form on the website, uh, generating a lead for their sales team. And you can see uh, the increase in traffic there, uh, four times increase. And then you can see the light blue line. Those are the number of goals each month. You can see that steadily increasing <clears throat> proportionally with the uh, increase in traffic. So I, I show that to, to illustrate the fact that, you know, we're not just generating more traffic we're also you know relevant traffic uh, that's actually turning into leads and sales for the client and the last case study I want to show you here five times increase in traffic and five times increase in leads uh, the situation is always pretty much the same here websites not generating enough traffic and leads that's why they they came to us we're going to do that audit. In this case, we did fix a lot of technical errors. And then we optimized the website. Uh, in this case, we created uh, new service pages. So one of the frequently uh, frequent situation that we run across is, um, let's say, a, a service-oriented business that just has one page listing all of their services, or maybe they're just listing a couple of their uh, services with different pages and then uh, we will then recommend building individual pages for each service and that way that individual page has a shot at ranking when someone is searching for that particular service that's a, a really important step in the process and we did some link building and again developed that library of articles that resource center and in this case, you can see, uh, again, it's organic traffic only, so that's SEO traffic. The darker blue line is sessions or visits. That lighter blue line, you can see, is that contact us form. So those are people contacting, uh, I, I believe it's actually a, a quote request form, and those are the leads from the SEO traffic. See that uh, ramping up pretty nicely there. All right, next I want to highlight the schedule and fees. <clears throat> and again, I want to emphasize we create customized SEO schedules. This is a, I can't emphasize that enough um, because I know uh, other agencies uh, don't create custom customized plans, so that causes some confusion. Um, and also, I'm going to show you an example, <clears throat> and I do want to just point out so there's no confusion here that that is just an example uh, and things do change over time. And we may have to adjust the plan uh, on a monthly basis. So again, our, our plan is going to follow that six step process I outlined earlier. And then we're going to customize it based on first and foremost, that SEO audit. We'll do that right away. The other factor is the number of pages that we need to optimize. For example, uh, if you have 20 different services, that's going to uh, require more work than a business that just has two services. We just have two pages that we need to optimize. We would need to invest more 
uh, uh, more time optimizing the, the business that has 20 services than we would with two. Another big factor is the number of business locations. <clears throat> so if you have multiple offices, let's say in New York City and in Los Angeles, we would want to set up, uh, uh, if you're looking to attract local customers and clients, we'd set up two different Google My Business profiles and we would need to build up citations separately for each location. So that would uh, change the scope of work there. Strength of competition, that should be fairly obvious. Uh, certain industries and certain locations are going to have stronger competition than others. And last and arguably the most important uh, factor is going to be the client's budget. Um, and we do pride ourselves on being able to cater to all budgets. That's why we have both training and services. Uh, and I'll get to it in a minute. We also have uh, one-time projects if you don't have the, the budget to do ongoing work. So here's an overview of, of our recommendations. And we would, we would always recommend doing monthly if you can. Uh, that's where you're going to, uh, to see the, the best results. And uh, a typical plan would be about 1500 in that first month and then $1,000 a month starting in the second month, and then be go ongoing. With that said though, we, can, we have worked with many clients who only have $500 a month for their budget, and uh, with that, we just reduce the scope of work each month. And it basically takes that six-step process and, uh, and spreads that out over more months than uh, if we were to do it with uh, a larger budget. And if you didn't have the budget for ongoing work, I mentioned we can do one-time projects, and typically those are in the neighborhood of $1,500 to 2,500. Um, it could be more, again, if there were more locations, um, uh, more services, um, that, that would, and, and just larger websites. But uh, for the most, for most businesses that we, we've spoken with, uh, it falls in the neighborhood of 1500 to 2500 And next I want to walk through a SEO schedule so you can see how this works. So I'm going to emphasize this again. I even put it in red font. <clears throat> this is a example schedule. And uh, whenever we start working with, with a new client, we emphasize this again, that it is subject to change. Um, so, you know, you know, once we do that SEO audit, if we find significant problems that need to be addressed, we're obviously going to bring that up, talk with you about it, and then we would adjust the plan based on what we found in that audit. <clears throat> so here's an example in that first month, let's say it's a, it's a $1,500 month one project, and then ongoing at $1,000 a month. You can see each item, and this is a, uh, Going back to you know the transparency and how we're not a, a black box, we would put together this plan, and this would be in the, the proposal. We'd have agreement on this, <clears throat> and then we would start working together. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, in that SEO audit, we may find some things, um, you know, behind the walls, uh, as they say. Uh, Good analogy would be uh, a contractor coming in and opening up the walls of your house, finding a lot of mold behind there. That's obviously going to change the scope of work and you would need to address that. So we, in some cases, have found during that SEO audit, we've uncovered some mold behind the walls, in which case we, we would then uh, address that with you and then the uh, schedule may change. But if all, all things, go smoothly, which typically they do. This would be a, a common plan here. And uh, you can review this. You'll get the slides so you can review this later. You don't have to read all of that. <clears throat> then you can see this is just a six month plan. And um, we would keep going after six months, uh, but uh, we, we just put this together 
for the first six months so that you can see what it looks like. Um, and then from there, <clears throat> once we're working together, each month we would send out a report. And in that report, it would talk about uh, what our plan is for the future months. All right, so the SEO terms, another frequently asked question. We ask for upfront payment. Uh, we uh, strongly encourage credit card. And uh, then we would set that to auto bill every 30 days. And uh, we do request six month commitments, then month to month. Reason for that, we really wanna work with clients that are looking for that long-term relationship. Uh, with that said, if you don't have the budget, and we're doing a one-time project, and obviously there's no commitment after that one-time project is uh, complete. Now, if you're interested, next steps to get started. If you would like to talk to someone in the Q&A box, just type in, I'm interested, and I do ask you to put that website URL in there as well, and that way we can do a, a quick review of your current website, put together a proposal, and then uh, one of our marketing advisors will schedule a call and uh, the marketing advisor would then walk through the proposal for you. And with that, we'll open it up to Q&A. Let me just take a look. If there are any questions I didn't get to? Sabrina asked about UPI CRM. I'm actually not familiar with that plugin. But I will make a note here. Our developer might be familiar with that. But uh, I see CRM in there. My guess is that's related to customer relationship management and maybe it uh, plugs into a, a CRM. Okay, so if that's the case, we generally uh, are comfortable with linking up with different uh, CRMs. We'll generally just use the form code for the CRM that you're using and then put that code directly on the page. But uh, if you're using a, a plugin and it's working, that's that's totally fine as well. All right. Oh, here we just got another question. Shane asked, "What about white label solutions for agencies?" That's a great question. We we do have a partner program, uh, both referral partnerships as well as white label partnerships. Um, the way that would work is uh, if if you're interested, Shane, um, just type into the the, the Q and A box that you're interested, and I'll have Caitlin follow up, Caitlin Smith on our team manages all of our, our partner relationships. She would reach out to you and give you some more information on how that partnership could work. But we, we do have a lot of um, partner relationships with other agencies, uh, for example, web development companies that then uh, refer their clients to us for their marketing after the website's done as well as uh, even other SEO companies and other PPC management companies, a lot of their minimum fees are are much higher than ours. Uh, for example, we've just formed a relationship with a, an agency where their minimum is $3,000. And when they talk to prospects and they uh, figure out that that prospect only has 1,000 or 2,000 or 500, then uh, they know they can't work with them, but then they'll just refer them over to us. <clears throat> okay, great, Shane. Uh, we'll definitely follow up. I uh, should be able to follow up today. Um, I see some questions here from Roger. <clears throat> Uh, so Roger, sorry, it took me a while to get through all the, the submissions there. 
uh, but it sounds like uh, that could be a good fit. <clears throat> I'll have to take a look at that site. Um, but yeah, we we could do, certainly do a one-time SEO project and then figure out how to uh, divvy up the work. That's another way that we have uh, approached certain projects. Uh, we'll start with a one-time SEO project, figure out what needs to be done, and then uh, a lot of times a client, let's say, has a developer who can do you know, 50% of our recommendations. They'll handle that work. We'll do the other 50%. So we're, we're comfortable with that approach as well. Any other questions? I know when I've attended presentations, uh, I'll get some questions that pop up when the webinar closes. If that is the case, just shoot an email to support at MainStreetROI.com and uh, we can always address that question via email. <clears throat> Uh, Mark asked, if you're currently building a new site and rebranding, what are the minimum pages necessary? That's a great question. And basically, it comes down to the uh, product and services that you're offering. So if you have five services, then you would uh, want to make sure that you have five separate service pages. Uh, in addition, obviously, you'd have a home page, an about us, and a contact us, and a privacy policy, all of that, you know, standard, the standard pages on your site. Um, but then what it, the, the big variables are um, number of products, number of services, um, as well as number of locations. Um, and then depending on the type of business, if you have a service area, it may make sense to set up area-specific pages. Uh, by that, uh, I mean we worked with a fence company that provided services in, uh, in a defined area, a certain radius around his uh, location, and we uh, set up pages for the, the main cities in that radius, and that's because people were searching for fence companies in those cities. So by creating those service area specific pages, we were able to have a very relevant page for those searchers. So Mark, if you uh, if you need more info or wanted to talk one on one, just just let me know. I know that was a bit of a vague answer. Uh, we would obviously need more information on what type of business it is to figure out all the, the different pages. Um, I do wanna say if, if anyone is on the line and they are in the process of building a new site, that's another area where we can help and we'd like to help during that phase rather than have you build a site and then we work together. Uh, it's better if we can work together when you're creating the structure of the site because uh, kind of the worst case scenario is you spend a lot of time and money building a site and then uh, you work with us or even another SEO company. They look at the site and say, hey, we really need to restructure this thing. That's obviously pretty frustrating for you since you just spent all that time and money creating that structure and it's not set up properly for SEO. All right, any other questions? If not, then uh, I'll be closing out the webinar shortly. And I have a note here as a reminder, if you could please complete the brief survey at the end. I believe there are just three questions to get your feedback. And again, uh, if you have any questions, you can always post them uh, in that survey. Uh, one of the uh, there's going to be a area where you could type in 
free form any any questions that you have feel free to shoot questions in through that survey or you can email them to support at mainstreetroi.com with that i think i'll i'll wrap this up and i hope you enjoy the rest of your thursday and have a great weekend take care